Hi dear friends, today I am going to talk about proposed classification of adenomyosis in infertile women to simplify the management options while undergoing ART. Friends, we are treating this way the adenomyosis and ART patient with our classification for several years or you can say near two decades. Unfortunately, we never thought of concising this classification and sending it for publication. COVID pandemic gave us a lot of time in hand and we compiled all our data and herewith I am sending you this classification. I am sure this will help you in treating your infertile patient with adenomyosis whom we should do the medical line of treatment, whom we should give a surgical line of treatment and how should we proceed. I am doing this with evidence of my data. So we all know that a prevalence of endometriosis in, uh, uh, sorry, adenomyosis in women varies between 24% uh, in at least 40 years old and 22% in less than 40 years old. Adenomyosis definitely affects and lowers our implantation rate. Several publications have shown that miscarriage rate and association of a preeclampsia FGR is also there with adenomyosis. So we need to treat adenomyosis or decrease the severity of adenomyosis before we do the embryo transfer so as to optimize our implantation rate and so as to optimize or decrease our miscarriage rate or chances of having a PIH and FGR in a pregnancy. So aim and objective of our study was to propose a management best classification of adenomyosis in infertile women to assess the efficacy of the proposed classification. I am going to tell you the efficacy also with my 100 patient studies. So based on classification, we took out our two years patient data who have undergone adenomyosis with IVF. These 100 patients, we have done all frozen embryo transfer and we took 4 cm as a standard cutoff size. Now, you all know, even for the fibroids, I do this mapping. The same mapping we do for adenomyosis. So, I must thank Dr. Mano Chinchwadkar, the great radiologist in the city of Pune, who gives me this mapping. And only because of that, the way I work, the way I treat my patient, this proposed classification has come. Friends, this classification has received Best Paper Award, Praveen Patel's Best Paper Award in recent ESR conference. It also received Best Paper Award in our Pune OBGY Society uh, annual conference. And I give a lot of uh, credit to my sonologist Manoj for that. Now, grade 1. What do you mean by grade 1? In grade 1, we have two. Grade 1A and grade 1b. Grade 1a means it is less than 4 cm but away from the cavity and grade b is less than 4 cm but it is touching the cavity. Both these patients don't need any surgical line of treatment. We just give a medical line of treatment and then we with the GnRH analogs or with Dynogest and our study all patients have received GnRH analogs though. And then we take them for a frozen embryo transfer. Grade 2, more than 4 cm. Grade 2a, it means more than 4 cm but it is away from the cavity. And grade 2b is more than 4 cm and it is touching or compressing the cavity. So grade 2a, which is away from the cavity, again needs only medical line of treatment before we do the FET. But grade 2b, we of course should try the medical line of treatment but if the medical line of treatment doesn't help in taking out the compression on the cavity you can then in such rare cases you can think about surgery because medical line of treatment became refractory. Grade 3 is a diffuse adenomyosis. We all know there is no surgical treatment for diffuse adenomyosis. 
the only way is try with medical but if it is a severe diffuse adenomyosis making uterus up to 20 week size or so probably surrogacy goes as an option and grade 4 may be localized or diffuse adenomyoma but associated with pelvic endometriosis these patient also may need surgery especially if they are associated with severe pain or hydrosulfings now this frozen embryo transfer we have as i told you we have done in all the patients with hrt cycle and beta scg was done on day 14 if you see my results grade of adenomyosis grade 1 that is less than 4 cm was 56% whom i treated with medical line of treatment grade 2 24% grade 3 8% and grade 4 was 12% so if you see now the statistics further in grade 1 56 percent all treated with medical line of treatment 71 percent was our pregnancy rate out of 56 40 patient conceived in grade 2 24 was our sample size 16 got uh, treated with medical line of treatment 8 needed surgical line of treatment because they were resistant to medical line of treatment compressing the adenomyoma. Whenever we do adenomyomectomy friends, I also want to inform you that the thickness of the wall from where we have excised the adenomyoma, we always try to keep between 9 mm to 15 mm so that chances of rupture of uterus during pregnancy are minimum out of this medical line of treatment 11 patient conceived while in surgical line of treatment three patient conceived out of eight in grade three diffuse adenomyosis nothing helped and we offered sur surrogacy to these patients grade four was 12 patients medical line of treatment was in five patient we did medical plus surgical in three and medical plus surgery for adenomyosis uh, for endometriosis so out of uh, seven patient three patient was medical plus surgery for adenomyoma while four patient needed surgery for endometriosis either because of a severe pain or associated hydrosulfings and we got eight patients conceived out of 12 patient so grade one endometriosis less than 4 cm away from the cavity or 1b less than 4 cm but touching the cavity in our study 56 percent of the women who were given gnrh for suppression of a hpo axis for three months and frozen embryo transfer was done it led to decrease in the size of adenomyosis with improved receptivity and implantation the pregnancy rate was 71 percent Lance et al. also showed pregnancy rate of 43% with medical management of adenomyosis. But in the study, there was a, no cutoff to the categorize which cases they treated medically. In literature, there is no consensus over the size of adenomyoma which should be medically managed. But based on our study and supporting medical literature, we propose that non-cavity distorting less than 4 cm adenomyoma we can have better results with medical line of treatment grade 2 more than 4 cm but away from the cavity again medical line of treatment grade 2p more than 4 cm touching or compressing the cavity surgical only in grade 2b and in 4 we advise surgery grade 2b when it is resistant to medical line of treatment. Tulandi has published a beautiful paper that surgery, yes, it may improve the result, but it should be offered only to those patients who have medical line of treatment where they are failure. So in grade 2B or 2, adenomyoma more than 4 cm, management depend upon the location of adenomyoma, its relationship with the cavity. When in contact with the cavity and compressing, it interferes with the adhesion and implantation of embryo, impairs the secretion of various implantation factors and we propose we can treat them with the medical line of treatment. The trial has to be given but if they are resistant, refractory, then in that cases surgery may be 
feasible and can be advised. In our uh, case study, the pregnancy rate was 62% in patient with adenomyosis more than 4 cm who were given medical line of treatment followed by FET and the pregnancy rate in a group who where medical line of treatment did not work, we did a surgery, it was 37.5%. Fatia and Jamal et al. demonstrated combined surgical and hormonal treatment significant benefit with the pregnancy rate of 44%. Tisui showed a pregnancy rate of 46% in women treated with adenomyomectomy. Dialogue showed a pregnancy rate of 47% after surgery in women with adenomyosis. Grade 3 diffuse adenomyosis, probably it needs a long term medical hormonal therapy. However, due to its extensive anatomical and molecular damage, patient may turn out to be for surrogacy as an option. Grade 4. Adenomyosis associated with pelvic endometriosis, hydrosulfings. The treatment in this group of patient is surgical if severe pain associated with hydrosulfing or non-responding adenomyoma which is compressing the cavity. In our study, the pregnancy rate was 66%. She et al. done a study on similar group of patient and shown a pregnancy rate of 51.8% through IVF after laparoscopic surgery. So friends, our classification is very simple, allows the cost effective management based on the location of a myoma, size of a myoma, its relationship with the cavity and association with pelvic endometriosis. It also helps us to simplify the treatment protocol. Thank you friends. It's very simple. So anytime you get the patient of adenomyoma and it is for a uh, IVF, fine. You retrieve the eggs, freeze out the embryo. Probably with your stimulation, there may be a marginal increase in the size of adenomyoma. So rescanning, and if you don't have such an excellent sonologist, you can do the MRI. Because MRI is the second acceptable method of investigation to diagnose adenomyoma. And in MRI, see the location. Less than 4 cm, whether near to the cavity or away with the cavity you just give us GnRH analogs 11.25 around 12th week you do the uh, repeat MRI or repeat sonography and you will see that the size has shrunken 30 to 40 percent many a times they say inconspicuous finding of adenomyoma now in grade 2 where more than four, per, uh, 4 cm away from the cavity, again every time I might have to give instead of 11.25 one dose, I may take it for 6 months that is 2 doses. But compressing the cavity after maybe 3 months if I, my repeat sonography is not showing any decrease or decrease is there but not significant, I will go for a surgery. If the volume is decreased like 40% but still there is a compression, I will still try second dose of GnRH analog and if then also the cavity is completely still compressing, I will think about surgery. Grade 3 adenomyosis, I tell patient before and only. Now with surrogacy, I think there are certain clinic who are doing surrogacy, I probably have to refer my cases over there. And grade 4 is very simple. Apart from the adenomyoma, you have to concentrate. Friends, this classification helps my unit at Ruby Hall and D.Y. Patil at Pune fantastically. For years together, we are working on this module with this mapping. COVID pandemic gave me an opportunity to sit with two years data, put up in the cases and work with my fellows who were absolutely bored with less work. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed as much I enjoyed making this. Thank you.